Hello and welcome to Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. I'm Sean Burke. Joining me is Andy Taylor, Jack Townsend and Graham Marshall. Coming up on this week's show. Uh, just Kane's a joke. Like, imagine mm. him in, a, in an actually decent side. Well, yeah, yeah I know. Ha ha, you all fell for my trap. He had one season where he saved every penalty, but other than that, he's pretty bad. Can we claim the trophy for being the most affected by injuries this season? It's another trophy for you. There we go, <laughs> add that one. What's the previous <laughs> one? <laughs> Injury trophy. Cabinet, yeah. That's it, Dream Team settles that debate. Well, I'm glad we, yeah. glad we fixed that. Let's move on. Grand. Wow, we've got a lot done in this episode already. Wow. So, Man City are champions. Sam Allardyce gets relegated for the first time in his career, and jacket connoisseur Scott Parker gets relegated for the second time in his. And I never even got to make my Scott Parker joke. The Prem may be wrapping up, but don't worry, it's not the end of fantasy football this season. Dream Team have just launched our Euros game, so sign up, get a league together, and get ready for the summer. So, as things cool down, we figured we'd wrap up our predictions table. We made a series of predictions at the beginning of the season, and now it's time for the final scores. How close were we? How ridiculous were my picks? And just why were we so generous to Arsenal? I'm going to have to take on Nick's uh, predictions here and, and hope that he really, really did me a favour because I didn't do any predictions at the start of the season. So Stand by, yeah. yeah. We have Henry's predictions, but we don't have your predictions. I'd say what, before we look at it, you're all right, you've got to do a snap decision on three. You've got to mm -hmm. pick either Henry's or Nick's. Yeah. Three, two, one. Nick. Oh, oh there we I go. Ben trusts Henry's uh, judgment. Yeah. He's the dream team coach. <laughs> oh, yeah, or he was <laughs> at one stage. So if we look at our league table predictions, champions and relegation spots, how about that? Three points for a correct answer, wasn't Ooh. it? Two points nice. if you're one place off. And one point if you're three places off. All right. Okay. okay. Jack, first up, despite the fact he's a Liverpool fan, he picked Man City. It paid off at three points to never, Jack. Never bet on your own side. Yeah. And uh, next up is Andy, picked Man City. at three points to him. Nick also picked Man City. Well done, Nick. All uh, even. Well there. <laughs> he did well. Uh, Sean, Thanks. ooh, picked <laughs> Liverpool. Not so sure about that one. Uh, but Man City were second, so that's two juicy points for me. Are we saying that Van Dijk's the, the defining factor there? Or oh, do, you reckon, yeah. just, yeah. do you reckon with Van Dijk they'd win the league then? I think they would have come second. <laughs> Sadio Mane did a very sad interview for the other yeah. day. He said it was like his worst season ever and he was like, I don't even know why. <laughs> uh, but uh, hopefully there's always next year, Sadio. Next year. Bottom of the table, it was Sheffield United, um, which absolutely zero of us predicted. How far off was everyone? They're mid-table pretty much on average. Can we talk about my relegation zone? We can. Yeah. Well, I've got I've got two of the three. I mean, that's got to count for something, surely. So do I, Andy. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> just for the sake of uh, simplicity, for me mainly, can I just give a point each for every team we got right in the bottom three? Jack, you got two. Congratulations. I think I only got one. Okay. Andy got two. Yeah, Jack, just, Jack's uh, only got one right. Jack, just, Jack, just, Jack, so just stay nice. quiet. Just stay quiet. Oh, no, you only got one, Jack. No! Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the lads ratted you out. I got two. And then Nick got... None. Big fat zero. I made a mistake. Wow. wow. So no one fancied Fulham or West Brom, really, did they? Can I just make comment on the fact that I've got West Brom above West Ham in my uh, <laughs> in my prediction? <laughs> you actually... Got West Brom at 16th and West Ham at 17th. Obviously, they've had a fantastic season this year. Mm -hmm. But do they, do they continue this form into next season? Well, I think Andy spoke about it before. Uh, it is, it's based on keeping certain players. But to be fair, I think we've got to rate Moyes as a manager that he can cope with losing players. Mm, you know, he yeah. did it at Everton. Mm. I'm pretty sure Everton lost quite a few players during his time there. And he always managed to just do a little sneaky signing. Yeah. I don't know what kind of scouting system he uses, but I mean, you know, Kufal and Suchek. OK, hold fire in the chat for a few minutes as it's time for the four to score challenge. This week, our sponsor Betway has set us a penalty picture challenge after poor Aguero's Panenka pain last weekend. I'm going to show the panel four images of players in the run up to a penalty kick. You guys have to guess whether they were scored or missed. And here is photo one. Oh, hang on. I recognise that keeper. Yeah, I mean, I've got no idea. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure... Well, no, I do. I'm sure <laughs> it was a miss. Oh, oh yeah, I think it's Jason Punchin. And he absolutely, punch? yeah, he absolutely skied it. Oh, no, oh, he skied it big time. 
I didn't remember the the moment, and it was Larice, and I know he hasn't got an amazing penalty saving record. So if oh, it was on, I thought he did. I actually no. realised the fact that I thought Larice did. Oh wow! He, he, okay. he had one season where he saved every penalty, but other than that, he's pretty bad. Andy got the first one right. Fair play. Oh, wow. Photo two coming up. Keeper's already moving, by the way. So he doesn't miss many. I'm going to stick with it. I've got to back him. It's ridiculous okay. not to. Ha ha! You all fell for my trap. It was a miss. One of his <laughs> rare misses. Few occasions. What happened there? What did he do? Did he miss or he save? just he skied it as well. So no points for anybody there. Um, right, penalty three. Is that Courtois? <laughs> it does look like Courtois. I'm trying to work mm. out who the team is. I'm not sure it is. No, I think it's a sort of uh, Venezuela. I think maybe. Yeah, you've all said the same thing, and you were all correct. It was a goal. Oh, so yeah, it's on. good, but it's no it's, good. He only scores penalties, doesn't he, Messi? Yeah. <laughs> Overrated, if you ask me. Um, okay. Set piece merchant. Well, at the moment, Andy is leading by one point, but Jack and Graz could equalise, but you'll have to stick around to find out what happens in this week's Fourth to Score Challenge, because right now, it's back to the football chat. Before we move on from the predictions, I just want to look at the top six as well. What did I have? I had Wolves in sixth place, Andy. What can yeah. I say? I was, I was well, look, it's injuries. You. Injuries have killed us. You know, we might have won the league if we had about him and <laughs> Can we claim the trophy for being the most affected by injuries this season? Oh, can you? With Liverpool in the, oh, in the mix? Oh, yeah. Well, Jimenez is our best player. Let's have that, right? Yeah. Right. Pedro Neto, our second best player, ACL. Johnny, ACL. You think Van Dijk <laughs> missing for Liverpool is a bigger bigger blow than Jimenez, Johnny? Yeah, but there were, we, it's not just Van Dijk, though. We've lost Henderson at times. We've lost Gomez at times. We've lost Allison at very important times. Allison, we, he's played pretty much every game, mate. <laughs> he was out Come for a good... Come on, he, was he? What, about he, four games? He was out at some important fixtures. Like, I'm not saying... Fair enough, you've got a good case for being the most effective, but at Liverpool... I, wanna, I think there, we take that trophy, personally. <laughs> All right, well, you you, okay, you can have something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the injuries trophy. Put it in the cabinet. Is there anything else from top six that jumps out? Mm. Just probably... I think Solskjaer deserves a, a lot of credit, really, let's be honest. Like, mm-hmm. Look at us, all of us doubted him. Yeah. You know, not, mm-hmm. I think, what, two of us didn't even have him in the top four. None of us had him in the top... Th- oh, no, sorry, Henry did, but he is a United fan. Um <laughs> I think they've done really well. Let's move on to the top scorers. Top scorer in the league at the moment. And by the way, for the purposes of this, this is our, the league is finished now, right? So top scorer in the league at the moment is Harry Kane, which Andy got correct and Henry got correct. Uh, the last couple of weeks, it's been a real competition between Kane and Salah as the top two to see who's not going to score. Like, I mean, they, they, they both had quite a few games where they could have scored goals. In fact, I think they've had disallowed goals. Human Son could uh, overtake both of them if, if they're not careful. I had Kane second there, so that's two points for me. And then, Nick, you had... I'm disappointed uh, to pitch Nick now. He's, nowhere he's, there. Yeah, nowhere. Werner. That's top three. is really poor, isn't it? Yeah. Sterling. <laughs> Sterling's had a bad season. Aubameyang's had a bad season. Werner was... I don't know what Werner was. He's starting to come a bit better now, but... Mm. Jack, you picked Salah, who Salah. is second. For... I'll be taking my three points in... Like a week or two's time when he does get <laughs> Forget about way. it. We'll, we'll do a bit. little Sorry. VAR in a couple of weeks' time. Why does Kane not get nailed on for Golden Boot every year? I just don't understand the disrespect. I've not either, but I think it's more like it's not against Kane, it's more against Spurs. In fact, that I, I had him down no, in seventh, but, seven, but I wasn't expecting expect yeah. Spurs. Yeah, uh, just Kane's I'm... a joke. Like imagine mm. him in, a, in an actually decent side. Well, yeah, yeah I know, really. but that, well, that's unthinkable. <laughs> And now he's added assists to his game as well, and the scoring hasn't even slowed down as a result. Oh, yeah. did we see? Uh, did, did we all see Michael Owen kicking off about assists on Twitter? No, <laughs> yeah. uh, on what Tuesday. Basically, he was saying it's an absolute joke that assists are starting to get a lot more credibility, and and they're, they're almost regarded the same as um, goals. And then Cesc <laughs> Fabregas has had a pop at him, saying yeah. that well, they well. are a hot, as almost harder to do than goals. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I think, look, Cesc needs to calm down a little bit because <laughs> ultimately a nice pass doesn't win you a game, does it? It's, a, it's putting it in the back of the net. Some of those passes can be very precise, although some of those assists are literally somebody passing it one yard and somebody running the pitch and scoring. But then again, some goals are some balls bouncing off someone's shin and going in. 
look, goals are more important than assists. Let's be quite right about it. It's only in the era of fantasy football. I mean, maybe Dream Team, maybe we're the corporates of it. We're trying to, because you get points for assists and everyone starts looking at you don't assists, get as don't many. You? you don't get as many points, though. So there we go. It's all fine. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, well, it's, it's all fine. That's it. Dream Team settles that debate then. Well, I'm glad we, yeah. glad we fixed that. Let's move on. Grand. Wow, <laughs> we've got a lot done in this episode already. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to our players to watch. Um, I don't really know how I can score this I mean dark horse of the season Mateus Pereira is a good call from Nick there he has been he has been good uh, oh yeah a reminder that Andy put Laporte as a dark horse <laughs> oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and I stand yeah, by guy, that maybe I stand by he's that not dark yeah, horse maybe. though he's sure, like he's a, a well established cho- player he's a third choice centre half he wasn't at the time <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't at the time yeah he was he was a third choice I was predicting him Brace him back in his foot. Stones. <laughs> Diaz was coming in this season. Stones had not had a good season forever. He was their first choice. Best I'd seen back. what Stones was doing pre season. <laughs> okay, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think if there's any point system going to be done there, I think Nick deserves a shout as much as it pains me to say it. Mateus Pereira, Pereira, Dark Horse, Phil Foden, young player. I think that's two yeah. cracking shouts. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll, we'll do it on best picks. We'll just give three points to one player in this. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to Nick. So. Yeah. For those two. Shall we move on to the managers? I think we should because oh. I think there's a few well, there's, there's definitely one to look at. <laughs> well, should I mean... we address should we just address the biggest one here? Is that none of our managers yeah. have even been sacked? No. None of them this no. is unprecedented, right? So we yeah. have a prediction, first manager to be sacked. None of them have been sacked. <laughs> one of them has been relegated. Yeah. I mean he still um, might get sacked, but he definitely wasn't the first might. to be sacked. It, yeah, it, Bilic... Lampard, Wilder, and Mourinho. I think there's, there's only been four seconds this that year. That might actually be some of the lowest amount of sackings. We're the first people to slag off kind of clubs just chopping managers really quickly. And it shows that there's been some sort of longevity this year. I think you can see that it's paying off for some of those clubs. I mean, look at the, the clubs that we, we picked first to be sacked. I mean, Jack, you, you picked David Moyes. Sticking with Moyes has definitely worked out for West Ham this season. I think that's minus points, surely. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. Jack has, got, Jack has got a Premier League manager of the season contender as his first to be sacked. I think my pick was the most accurate, despite the fact he wasn't sacked. Um, just considering where they were in the league, you know. Well, Sean, have you, give yourself a point then for Parker, because he did get relegated. So Finally, is uh, top Dream Team point scorers. So we did a prediction uh, by position, goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, striker. Henry has Everson. Uh, <laughs> I imagine that's a type player. I imagine that's a type <laughs> No, no, immediate disqualification. <laughs> okay. Um, right, Jack, you put Allison, uh, Andy Ederson, Nick Allison. I put Henderson. I thought he might play for United for some reason. Um, the actual top scorer for goalkeeper is Martinez, right? Uh, no, it's Mendy. So, I mean, he literally, what he wasn't even on the game when we did that prediction. No, so, mad. I mean, it would have been crazy if any of you had predicted him. Yeah. Uh, that would have <laughs> been, would have been um, unbelievable. He missed the first game of the season against West Brom and then he did start the second game. A lot of so that has, has come been... recently, though, to be fair, because, I mean, they weren't exactly um, watertight at the back with uh, Lampard, but Seashell's got the got them playing the old Chelsea way, score a goal and then never, ever let in a goal. And let's move on to defenders then. Uh, so for our predictions, most of us did Trent's Alexander-Arnold yeah. Liverpool after his ridiculous season last year. In fact, all but one of us did Henry put Pereira, but the top defender is Cancelo. Yeah. By, Two, by 50 points more than anyone else. a long wow. way, yeah. Where is that? Where did Trent actually finish? Long way down. He's thirteenth in defenders, I think. And yeah, he's still one of the most picked percentage yeah. wise, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, Rich yeah. James second, ten percent of people picking. Uh, let's move on to midfielders. Right uh, for our picks, it's a lot of De Bruyne. Uh, I, in perhaps the most insane pick, uh, have Adama Traore, who I really, <laughs> really thought. And he got me excited at the start of the season. You know, the way he talks about him, I was like, right, he's really going to crack on this season. We have three Kevin De Bruyne's for Jack, Andy and Nick. And he's third. But the winner was, uh, well, uh, Fernandez. 311 points. He's over 100 points ahead of him. The only person that gave for that was Henry. Yeah. So that and in second place... Well, that is the Man United bias, I suppose. In second place is Phil Foden. So it makes that shout for a young player of the year even more, surely. Like, yeah, yeah, that's I mean that's, that's, that's crazy. That is incredible. That is him incredible. to be above De Bruyne, Mares. Yeah. Like that's, that's great mental. work. 
Now, striker, you're all in trouble here, I think. <laughs> uh, other than Andy, who, to, to be fair, Andy was was consistent across his predictions. I've got Kane top goal scorer. I've got to go top. You've got to back scorer. it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, is he top in the game, I think, all over right now? Bruno and Kane are in a league of their own this year. It's, it's the assist as well. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Michael Owen. Yeah. The final scores are uh, Jack, seven points. Okay. Congratulations. That's it. Wow. Nick, slash Raz, seven points. Oh, Sean, seven points. Congratulations, me. Seven points all round. Andy, 12 points. Oh. Congratulations. Cheers, boys. Um, oh, there we go. Come to me with any tips you want for next season. I'll be on you, man. How yeah. do you know he's not changed the uh, the spreadsheet? <laughs> <laughs> As last edited. Uh... <laughs> Last night, as of recording, Leicester beat Man United after the Reds fielded a team that had 10 changes from the side that faced Aston Villa. This loss then confirmed the league title for Man City. No wonder Pep loves a bit of squad rotation. Although unlikely, United could still have potentially won the league up until that game. Was that them just thrown in the tail? Is that a bit... Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's kind of crazy. Like, I mean, I don't think they were going to win the league, right? I don't think any United mm-hmm. fan was like, oh, if we win this game, you know, the chase is on. Mm-hmm. But if I had... Uh, the opportunity to stop Arsenal, like if Spurs had the opportunity to stop Arsenal from winning a trophy of any kind, yeah, you'd want your team to go out there and do that, right? It's like a double hit for United, though, isn't it? It's like not only are they keeping their players fresh to face Liverpool, mm-hmm. but they've also given Leicester points, which will mean Liverpool likely will miss out on top four. I know it was a long stretch yeah. anyway, but it's like a double. It's like. A double header for them. I've already had a row with Henry about this because I dis- <laughs> I disagree with it massively. But I don't I don't actually mind him resting players against Leicester. That's not an issue for me. I feel like when you've got three games in just a short period of time, the natural game to rest them is the middle one because then the players that play either side of it can get an ample amount mm. of rest. I don't mind that. What I do mind is the lack of competence from Man United and the staff at Old Trafford to have let those fans come on the pitch and cancel the game. Therefore, that means that that game is now being rescheduled in this absolute chaos of a week where they've got to play three games in six days. So Leicester have benefited. Liverpool have, co- have lost it through the incompetence of Man United's security. That's what it boils down to. No, it does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How is it, yeah. how is it not? Your point. Yeah. How is it not? And Henry he, made the point earlier of saying, well, they could have arranged the game for later on in the season and it's the FA's fault. They want to, they want to punish us. No, it's nonsense. Clearly, there's too much money. There's too much crossover with the Euros. This is the only time they have to play. I'm sure no one wanted to see Man United playing two ga- three games mm. in six days. If that game was not Leicester and Liverpool and that game was Fulham and West Brom and it was two stays up, Imagine the outcry. It would yeah. be another Sheffield United West Ham. It'd be like a, a court case. It would. Because if that game sent a team down last night, we would be fuming about it. Remember when Wolves got uh, fined quite a few years ago under Mick McCarthy for fielding a week inside because of the schedule? Are United going to get fined? Absolutely not, because it's United. That's how it works. You yeah. can't find United, can you? Wolves sound like the unluckiest club on the planet. I think it's just because uh, Andy's got such a good memory for these events. Yeah, yeah. No, we like, are genuine. We were the first ever team to get fined for week in, week, uh, fielding a week inside. It's another trophy for you. There we go. <laughs> Add that one. That was, that was the previous <laughs> one. The injury trophy. The cabinet, yeah. Congratulations. It's still more than got Spurs, Will Graz. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have the, uh, the Golden Boot winner, but nothing else. Uh... What, do you reckon you have an individual honours in the team trophy cabinet? I reckon we probably happens? do. I reckon we yeah. do. Yeah, You've be, got to yeah. fill it up somehow, Andy. Come on. Well, we've got to talk about the fact that Man City have now won the league as well. Yeah. Officially confirmed. And uh, that's Pep's third league win in four seasons. Something yeah, yes. that only Fergie's greatest ever United squads achieved. Are we something... I mean, is this as he cemented his place now as a Premier League legend, surely? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think, and I think we can easily... Um, kind of silence the critics in terms of the money and stuff. You know, at the end of the day, no one slags Fergie off for signing Ronaldo for 30 million or Rio for, you know, all the best managers have to have a little bit of cash because everyone around them has silly amounts of money as well. Particularly in the modern era where you've got clubs like Everton that are backed by like multi-billionaire owners. And I think the, the point on Phil Foden is really impressive, you know, which is where Jose Mourinho gets a lot of critics because how many, how many young lads has he brought through? I feel like we were sat here maybe a year or two ago talking about Phil Foden uh, and, and how, you know, Sancho going off to Dortmund and being like, oh, Phil Foden probably should have done something like that because he's never going to get the chance at City. So yeah. you've got to give credit there. 
to Pep that he's brought him into the side and is now one of the most important players. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the performances this season is absolutely electric to watch. Second highest scoring midfield player on the Dream Team game, yeah. which I don't think anybody would have predicted. As we mentioned earlier, despite the end of the season approaching, that doesn't mean an end to fantasy football as Dream Team Euros is now available to play. Dream Team Euros is the perfect fantasy football game to accompany this summer's tournament, not least because it's free to play and there's a £50,000 jackpot up for grabs. Pretty tasty. But to tell us more about it is our resident fantasy expert, Nick. Thanks, Sean. The big news is that Dream Team Euros is here. That's right, we've created the best fantasy football game to accompany this summer's major international tournament. Now, the rules will be familiar to most. You've got a £50 million budget. You've got to pick the 11 best players to get the most points as possible. You can play in mini leagues with your friends or work colleagues and all that good stuff. And the best thing, of course, is that it's completely free to play and there's a £50,000 jackpot up for grabs. Now, sign up is available right now, but player prices won't be available until the 21st of May. It's a bit complicated because the current season is still going on and we don't know who's going to be in the squads. So you can have a little play around for now. But we can reveal three player prices for you. Harry Kane, £7 million. Cristiano Ronaldo, £7 million. And the most expensive player at this summer's tournament, Kylian Mbappe, £7.5 million. Sign up now and get tinkering. Well, we have to find out who won our 4 to score challenge this week. Let's see what happens. At the moment, it is... Andy with two points and Graz and Jack with one point apiece. Right, so they could Ooh. bring it back to a draw with this. Photo four. Oh, no, I remember this moment, but I can't remember. <laughs> do I stick to my, Which one my was plan it? or do I metagame it and try and predict what Sean would have done? <laughs> I'm sticking with it. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> well, it was no goal. Oh, <laughs> He's brought means... it back. He's brought it back. Oh, I wish he brought it back. <laughs> I'm out, though. I'm out. Is it tie break yes. time? We've one more bonus photo. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> photo five. <laughs> oh. Surely not from there. Surely. It's a great one, that's sure. <laughs> <laughs> to include oh. yourself, though, in a list of penalty misses is. I believe you got the number seven jersey as well. You're not a number seven. <laughs> I've got pace. You, you haven't fall. seen me in full flow. What, what have you gone for, Jack? I went for goal. I've gone for goal. So I'm, I'm going to go for miss. I feel like he's, there's no way. Well, it was a goal. Oh, well, Jack's Jack. pulled it back. He's and he's won it. Nowhere. How have you scored United. that from there? How have you scored that? <laughs> you need to have more confidence. Where in, where in the goal did it go, Nick? Uh, it, uh, I think it actually pings in off the post. Oh, <laughs> does it? Yeah. Oh, cool. oh, we'll have an actual video. replay on I that don't. one, yeah. Yeah, I don't miss any of them, but the last one is better than the first one. Well, that's all from us, folks. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. And don't forget to sign up to the Dream Team Euros game. It's up and running, so get your team sorted. Take care, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>